Oh, excellent. Hi, I'm Emily Hogenbrook. I'm from IBM, and I'm here to talk to you today about moving forward with OpenStack and the enterprise. So I'm from the ZVM lab at IBM, and ZVM is a hypervisor for the IBM mainframe. We have about a 40-year history, but we're always looking at ways to move forward and innovate, so we got involved with OpenStack a, a couple years ago, seeing that that was really a, a great way to move some of our system management capabilities forward into the cloud. So 2014 was kind of a building year for us. We were deciding how exactly we should deliver our OpenStack support, how we were going to package it, and if our customers were even interested in it. And happily, our customers, which are a lot of big banks and government, uh, were very interested in it, and we have several proof of concepts going on right now. So this year, 2015, it's really about expanding. So expanding our support into new OpenStack projects, um, and especially expanding into the community and really getting more involved with, with what we're doing in the community. So just to show you, this is our big picture of what our OpenStack support looks like. I showed this one at a, a brown bag talk in Paris, but you can see on the bottom here we have our two ZVM systems, and both of them run in logical partitions. On the mainframe, we always partition because there are just too many resources to, to put them all toward one system. And of course, I've shown two ZVM systems here, but you could have many more, or you could just have one. On ZVM, we probably have some Linux guests running. We support a variety of operating systems as guests, but Linux is our main customer right now. Then we have something running called System Management APIs. And so this was something we developed 10 to 15 years ago just to provide a programmatic interface into ZVM for, for system management tasks. Then a couple years ago, we did some XCAT support. So XCAT is Extreme Cloud Administration Toolkit, and it has two parts to it. It has a management node, which you only need one of, and then it has two, a hardware control point that you're gonna have on each system. And the management node and hardware control points, they talk over SSH, nice secure connection. So that's what we had before. Then when we added our OpenStack support on top of it, we put in a compute node on each of our ZVM systems. So the compute node has goodness in it with Nova and Neutron and, and all those OpenStack projects. And the compute nodes are then going to talk to the XCAT management node, which then decides which system to, to actually do things on. Of course, you need a controller node in OpenStack for your compute nodes. And so our controller node which is where you have services like Glance and Keystone, that's going to either be on another system, it could be on an x86 system, it could be on an IBM Power system, or it could be on a Z system, and in that case you'd see it actually be part of the compute node. So that's what you interact with if you go through the cloud manager user interface, that's what you'll see is, is the controller node. And I should mention that OpenStack is talking to XCAT via a REST, RESTful interface. So this is how we decided to deliver it. It all comes packaged with the ZVM product. And so when you install ZVM, you get all of these. You don't have to configure all of this separately or install a, a separate Linux guest with a bunch of RPMs on it or something like that. So we decided to do this last year, and it's working fairly well so far. It's all part of the IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack product. And what I wanted to show here with this slide is really that IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack stretches across a variety of different architectures. So what IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack is, is uh, just OpenStack Kilo, obviously, next release coming out in a little bit. Um, so it'll be all of the regular Nova drivers from OpenStack packaged up, so things like KVM, Hyper-V, VMware, plus some IBM-specific drivers uh, like ZVM, also like PowerVC. And, of course, you can interface into it via the Horizon interface, or I like to show it also has its own user interface um, through the controller. And if you want to see a demo of this, there's a really cool demo going on over in the expo floor, and you can see it interacting with the different architectures. 
So this is the picture. This is what we delivered starting last fall. And it's what our, our customers are using now. So looking forward, what did we deliver this year? Well, our Juno support. It came out in March, which is a little bit behind when Juno officially came out. But we wanted to do some extra goodness in there, so it took us a little bit longer. But it includes support for manage to as well as manage from. So that's really talking about the position of that controller node. And so we say that it could be on an x86 or on a, a P machine. In that case, it would be managing to Z. Or it could be on a Z machine and maybe managing Z as well as x86. And um, in, in that case, it would be managed from. We included also NPIV support because multipathing, I think, important to almost all customers at this point. We included boot from volume support, which was really important so that you can boot from a volume, take a snapshot, capture, deploy. Uh, good way to create new instances. Uh, Chef-based deployment. So we included a, a Chef server with it. And this has actually been unexpectedly really popular for our customers. It's the, the first time that we've included uh, Chef on Z. And a lot of them have used it even outside of OpenStack. Um, they've been finding uses for, for Chef cookbooks on Z. So lots of positive feedback about that. Uh, then we have some performance improvements for our image repository. So additional sharing between Glance and Nova for the image repository just to make things a, a little bit faster and run a little bit smoother. We now include uh, Keystone, Horizon, and Heat in our appliance. So obviously include uh, broadening the number of OpenStack projects that, that we include. And we have right now three available templates for Heat. Obviously, we're looking to do more. So that's what came out in March. If we look just ahead to next month, we'll have our Kilo support coming out. Now, Kilo, we're only going to support for Manage 2. So having that controller on a, a x86 or a P managing two system Z. And that was really in response to what we were hearing from customers. They weren't interested in upgrading their system Z after only two months. Uh, usually they like to, to wait a little bit longer before they, they have to install new things. So it's okay. We've done lots of testing to make sure that it will work if they keep their compute nodes on an earlier release and they upgrade their controller node. Um, but just we're trying to get on this cadence where we'll do the manage to every OpenStack release, and then we'll do manage from probably every other OpenStack release so that our customers only have to do an, an upgrade once a year. And we included some chef enhancements in this as well. Another big thing that we've been working on is getting more involved in the community. So we have two StackForge drivers out there, one for Nova and one for Neutron. And we're actually developing out in the community. We're not just putting static snapshots of our code. So you should see a lot more activity going on there. Again, with the, the goal, hopefully, for Nova of eventually getting entry someday. And so that's what we've been working on. If we look forward, hopefully, you'll see some more StackForge drivers out there uh, looking at uh, Solometer support. Because for Z, uh, obviously, chargeback is huge for our customers. Monitoring is very important for our customers. Uh, our chef cookbooks as well, we're looking to, to put out in the open source community so that others can see them and comment on them and, and maybe help update them. You should see a CI system from us soon. Again, part of this working to get entry in Nova. Um, so we should have that up and running. Then some more tools to help our customers manage their existing infrastructure with OpenStack. So a lot of our customers have large Z deployments with thousands of virtual machines, and they can't just recreate all of them in OpenStack. They need some kind of a migration path. So we're going to be working on that as well. Of course, Liberty Currency should expect to see Manage to as well as Manage from for Liberty. And Docker support. So there was just recently a port of Docker to Z. And so we're looking at hopefully including some Nova Docker support um, in our Liberty driver. 
and now the corporation uh, wants me to include some <laughs> slides from, from our monk on here. So this is all in support of IBM's hybrid cloud strategy. So IBM is number one hybrid cloud, so we must be doing something right there. But the idea really is that uh, System Z, it's very controlled. A lot of times uh, customers are not comfortable with the, the data and things like that on System Z going outside of their corporation. So System Z usually tends to be a, a private cloud type of system. But all of our customers have other platforms, you know, x86, power, and a lot of times those are, are much more suited to a, a public cloud. So that's where you get into the hybrid cloud for a lot of our customers, very important to them. So I just want to encourage everyone to check out some of the other IBM sessions. We have an absolutely huge IBM team this year that's uh, actually here at the summit and they go across a lot of different areas within OpenStack. So check us out. If you're interested in joining our team, find one of the people with the blue shirts on. They're probably all over in the expo hall, but they'd love to talk to you about joining the IBM team. So thank you very much, and any questions? Yep. Okay, have a nice day.